I got crushed by a mere child at chess. Now, basically, I'm in a chess tournament, and I had one and a half out of two points, and when I walked up to my third game of the day, I was facing a eight or nine year old girl. Now, I got really nervous because children aren't good at chess unless they are. Basically, if you're facing somebody who already has a couple wins at a tournament and is a kid, you should be scared to death. Now, children normally aren't good at chess, but if they are good, they're much better than you. So, now without further ado, let's take a look at this game I played in my third round, and I got absolutely destroyed. Let's take a look at this game where I get absolutely destroyed by a child. Now this game starts with c4, e5, and after the opening we get into a sort of Dutch defense because I played the move f5, and after I play the move e4, the knight hops into this side of the board, I kick it out with the bishop. The best move here is to play h4, and my opponent did not play this instead of just retreating the knight, which is too just fine. Preparing to move the knight to f4, a better square in the future. After the next couple of moves, I put pressure on the pawn. My opponent defended, and I played the move g6, playing connect 4, and forgetting we're playing chess. Now, after knight to f4, I go knight to e7, basically saying I'll trade knights at some point if they try to hop in here. After my opponent develops their bishops to slightly better squares, I play bishop to a6, putting pressure on this pawn. Now she goes queen to a4, the point being to try to kick out my bishop, but after my bishop moves, the queen doesn't really have much to do here, so it eventually has to move to a better square. Now I castle, the opponent should have castled queen side because there's some attack on my king with h4, h5. But it's fine, castles king side, and after castles king side for me too, queen to b3. Now I move my king, trying to get out of any discovered checks that could potentially come from the queen, and after the knight hops to the center, I made my biggest mistake. Basically, after taking, this is fine, but what's not fine is the move knight to a5. Now, I quickly calculated that takes, takes 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 this is fine for me i have the open file everything is good it's not fine however because after bishop takes bishop takes there's the move that's quite easy to see but i missed bishop to b4 attacking my rook and all of a sudden i'm screwed i can't just move my rook because the bishop hangs right so instead i have to find the move c5 which i did but this is still absolutely terrible for me because after a pawn takes, I need to move my bishop. And then after pawn takes again, I have to move my rook. Now, I shouldn't have actually taken my rook here. I should have um, just taken this pawn and been fine. I'm down material. But instead, I move my rook. And after the move b7 by my opponent, I have to play rook to b8. And after bishop to d6, my position is absolutely depressing. Now, I have to somehow turn this game around. I play queen to b6, trying to trade queens because at least I'm going to get this pawn back. Now, we do trade queens, and I get this pawn back. Now, from here, I see a way I could potentially make my opponent positionally weak. I do have the bishop pair. I'm completely lost, but at least I have pressure on these pawns. So, after my opponent plays the move b3, I go rook to a7. The point of this is that now I'm putting pressure on the pawn on a2, and after they move the pawn on a2, I'm able to go bishop to c3. The point of this is that after a couple moves, I'm able to go bishop to b5, and I set up this sort of mini fortress here. My bishop protects, and the rooks aren't going to be able to double up and actually get in. White will eventually have to sacrifice a pawn if they want to break through on this side, on the right side of the board, or if they'd like, they could try to create some sort of opening on the left side of the board. My opponent at first tries to open on the king side over here. However, this doesn't go very well because eventually I uh, she, she goes g5 check, which isn't the best move because now I'm able to at least have this mini fortress on the left side. However, after the move h5, I go bishop to g8. The point of this is that if takes, takes, she can't double up on the 
h file because my bishop will protect the h7 square. So at first she does try to go over there until she realizes that she can't do that. So instead she decides to sacrifice a pawn. Now I have a couple options here. Firstly, I could take this pawn, but that's no good because this is too dangerous for me. And it opens up the position for white. The rooks are coming in. It's not good at all. Instead, I take like this. And after bishop to c4, I push this pawn attacking. Now, the bishop could either retreat and be passive, or the better move, just attacking the rook. Now, I have to move my rook somewhere, so I move it to this side. I don't want to allow this, because if my bishop moves, then all of a sudden this c5 pawn hangs. So by going here, I protect the a5 square twice, so that if this move is played, I can take it with my rook, and this c5 square is still protected. Now, after rook to d1, king to f8, my point being I'm going to try to come up here with my king and protect my pawns. I start to do that, and here, after protecting this pawn with my bishop and rook, tragedy strikes. My opponent goes a5. Now, I don't want to take this because rook takes. So instead, I say, hey, what if I go king to d, um, king to d6, I'm attacking the bishop, I'm protecting this with my king and bishop, what could go wrong? I play this move, and can you see why this is absolutely terrible for black? Yep, the move, bishop takes d5. I'm completely lost here. The reason is, if bishop takes, let's see, there's rook takes bishop, and then I lose my rook. So after this is played, I realize I obviously blundered. So instead of taking the bishop, I go king to e5, trying to continue the game. We trade bishops, and here I have some potential ideas of taking and creating some sort of attack with the bishop and rook, but my chances of winning this game are very slim to none. After the move h6, I get some hope because... Now, my king and rook are able to stop the white rook from infiltrating onto my area on this bottom half of the board. They push the pawn, and after I attack it, they defend. So, now I play bishop to c3, she moves the rook up, I give a check, and sort of create, again, this sort of protected position for myself. After the king moves, I move my rook up not allowing this rook to come ever onto the second or sorry seventh rank and after the king moves i'm able to win a pawn here this pawn doesn't really matter in the large scheme of things i'm able to pick up two pawns and now i have slight hope because i have a past h pawn but it doesn't matter eventually this game ends after the rook comes to this side um the whole idea of moving my bishop like this is that after the rook comes here I'm able to stop this pawn from promoting. However, the pawn comes anyways, and eventually I realize it's pointless. After check here, I just decide to go into mate. I, I didn't really want to play on the, in this game. So instead, it's checkmate, and the game is over. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll make more videos like this one.